when these women tell me that they were put into a cell and that their sink was not working and we tested the sink ourselves and the sink was not working and they were told to drink out of a toilet bowl, I believe them. So I'm asking for Jacqueline, who's age, was age seven, from Guatemala, who died from sepsis while in our care. The most basic of questions about the care and welfare of those held in the custody of our government were either dismissed or met with a non-answer, affirming what we know. This agency was never built, never designed, never trained for the care and keeping of families. Good morning and welcome back to AM Joy. An emotional House testimony Friday morning. Freshman Democrats detailed their harrowing observations from touring migrant detention centers in Texas, where hundreds of migrants, including children, remain in overcrowded and unsanitary conditions. Vice President Mike Pence also visited two detention centers on Texas on Friday. And although Pence admitted the centers were, in fact, overcrowded, I mean, how could he not, he had a very different reaction to what he saw. Every family that I spoke to told me that they were being well cared for and different than some of the harsh rhetoric that we hear from Democrats on Capitol Hill, our Customs and Border Protection are doing their level best to provide compassionate care to these families in a manner the American people would expect. Hmm. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is still planning raids targeting migrant families, reportedly starting tomorrow morning. The raids will target at least 2,000 undocumented migrants across several major cities and notice they're only targeting cities, not rural towns in red states where people use migrant labor on their farms and their ranches. Nope, just cities. Just saying. Joining me now, Ellie Mastal of AboveTheLaw.com, Mustafa Santiago Ali, Vice President of Environmental Justice, the Wildlife Federation, Maria Elena Incapie of the National Immigration Law Center, Maria Teresa Kumar of Voto Latino, and MSNBC contributor E.J. Dion. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Maria Elena, let me go to you first, because Vice President uh, Biden, uh, Vice President, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to call it Joe Biden, sorry about that, <laughs> Vice President Mike Pence went to these facilities. You saw him physically standing near the people, so he was physically in the room where we have heard reports that people have not showered for 40 days. He saw people standing there. He walks out of that overcrowded facility, which he admitted was overcrowded, and said everything was fine. I didn't see him talking to people. I didn't see any pool reporting of him speaking to people. But he claims everyone told him everything was fantastic. Here's a piece of reporting uh, about that visit. Uh, this is from the pool. When the men saw the press arrive, they began shouting and wanted to tell us they'd been there 40 days or longer. The men said that they were hungry and wanted to brush their teeth. It was sweltering hot. Agents were guarding the cages wearing face masks. That's Josh Dashi of the Washington Post. And now let's hear some, let's see some video and hear some sound of what the men were saying as they were seeing the press. We are not a terrorist. 40 days, uh, 40 days. Uh, Maria, I mean, how can the vice president have come out and claimed that he spoke to people who said things were fine when you can physically see that that is not true? I think the only way, that, Joy, that that can happen is, frankly, uh, to deny uh, the pres vice president's own inhumanity and our humanity as a people in this country. Um, what this shows us from the vice president and from the president from the very top is that we are talking about an administration whose culture is cruelty. This is an administration that is governing based on chaos, on fear and cruelty. What he witnessed, what every single person who has gone to the concentration camps camps has seen is pure cruelty, inhumanity, paid for by our very tax dollars. Yeah, and I mean, um, Maria Teresa Kumar, they're, literally, they're now down to calling the people who are complaining about treatment. 40 days without a shower, not being able to brush their teeth, not getting food, little kids being pulled from their parents still, uh, and they're basically essentially now calling them liars. Here is Ken Cuccinelli, who is the acting, and we got a lot of actings here, Director of Citizenship and Immigration <laughs> Services. Here he is uh, essentially saying that the people who are saying they're being mistreated are just lying. The men and women of ICE are committed to doing their job and fulfilling that mission, which includes uh, deporting those who have gone all the way through the due process and gotten a removal order but not obeyed it. 
uh, of which there are about a million people in this country. We have an enormous number of people coming to the border, lying about their circumstances, fraudulently claiming asylum when they don't have a prayer of making an asylum case. They're not, if people are being allowed to claim asylum, which is perfectly legal, how can they claim that they're lying about their asylum claims that they're not letting them even make? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the, what he is talking about, he basically immediately has made a judgment on someone's status, and that in itself should actually make sure that he is absolutely removed as head of DHS. He is not abiding by our own laws. Every single person has this. But what I found very striking about the video with Pence in that detention camp and that internment camp, Joy, was that he didn't approach the men. He didn't talk to them. He didn't see what he can do, what he can offer services. And that was what struck me, is that in his eyes and in his view, he was seeing individuals that were not human. And that, that in itself was dehumanizing. I can't imagine seeing someone in that condition and not approaching them and not trying to, wanting to figure out what else we can do for them. But this is based on cruelty. It is the most duplicitous effort by the administration because they know that it rails up the base and it's all connected. When he, we know that they're going to separation family 2.0 by doing immigration raids in cities, tearing up families. We have 16 million Americans that live in mixed status families. We're talking about leaving children behind. When a parent has to have a directive saying, who is going to have my child in the event that I get arrested? That should be a shame. This is a stain on our country, but we have to be diligent. The fact that we had liberty for justice, we had so many people yet last, yesterday do vigils around the world in name of what we're doing in this administration sheds light that the majority of Americans don't believe in this, but we have to stay diligent. We have to have this news coverage. We have to not avert our eyes because what is happening at the border is not only disgusting, it's shameful, and the world is watching. And, and you know, EJ, do you, it was interesting to me, and I, I noted that uh, where, where we, we, we were able to see the vice president go was to see men, right? They were willing to show us these pictures of a bunch of men inside of those cages because the, 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 the story they want us to believe is that the people coming across are not children and abuelas and, and grandmas and, you know, and, and, and moms. It's, it's a bunch of what they want people to believe are gang members, right? So they only want you to see men. So they let us see him talking to men, not talking to them, but just being in the same room with them. Um, they don't, then he denies that what these men are saying is happening. They're yelling out, we haven't been able to shower for 40 days. And now he's pretending he didn't hear anything, right? He didn't see or smell anything. He'd been in a room with a bunch of people who haven't showered for 40 days, you didn't smell anything? Okay. Um, it strikes me that there's also a demonstrative, uh, there's a demonstration being shown here by putting these men on display and having the vice president show them because they do want to tell his base, we're hurting the right people. Is that too cruel of me to say? No, we, you know, my, what struck me about all this was very much the same. First of all, Maria Teresa's point is really important. Having those people, human beings in front of you, and not even engaging them is the ultimate in otherizing a whole group of people. Um, so I think you're right about the kids. But thirdly, the horror is the point here, and that is more horrifying in some ways than anything. Um, the horror is the point in two respects. One, the administration has said at various times, uh, we want to send a message that people shouldn't try to come uh, get asylum here. They shouldn't come to the borders. They shouldn't try to escape violence. And the horror is the point in the political sense, which is so much of this is about sending a message to the president's political base. And it was really, I'm glad you uh, focused on Josh Dawsey's really powerful pool report about what was happening. I mean, uh, Vice President Pence had a kind of double weird argument. A, everybody's exaggerating the horror, but then if there is horror, it's because Democrats aren't mm. funding us. This is just pure politics of the very, very worst sort. Yeah, it, 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 it's shameful. And by the way, they're still separating children. I mentioned that earlier. Um, at least 18 migrant children under age two separated from their parents. A House report found they're still taking people's kids from them. Um, let's talk about these raids now. I want to come to the table here and talk about these raids that are coming up. Um, we've now had, uh, I'm flipping this, but this is uh, six for my, for my producers. The ACLU has filed a lawsuit to try to stop the raids and deportations. You've got a lot of sort of frantic movement to try to tell people what they can do if somebody tries to kick in your door. I'm not sure what you would do if someone kicked down your door. Pull them out. Pull, uh, this is from the lawsuit. The government system for providing notice is in chaos. In thousands of cases, the government mailed notices to incorrect addresses, sent them with no date or time, set hearings 
excuse for dates, including weekends with no hearings being held at all. You now have mayors who are saying, not in my town. Let's listen to a few of these mayors who are saying, don't, come, don't try to come to my town and take people. Here we go. I've not talked to a single mayor who wants an immigration raid on their assist, aren't impacted by illegal immigrants. All of our city personnel know we do not cooperate with ICE. We tell people their rights, we protect them. What we are working on is, is doing everything we can to push back against what the Trump administration is doing. Is that going to be enough? Can, can people, can mayors um, and cities stop ICE from coming in and taking people? They can't completely stop them. They, sh they should do everything. They are doing everything they can. They should continue to do everything they can. But this is a terror attack. The, the, the Trump administration mm -hmm. is launching terror attacks on our cities targeted at people out of status, but also target, targeted at anybody who looks like they might be out of status. And they have arrested people who are U.S. And citizens they have, they have, and attempted they have to deport them. They absolutely arrested yeah. people who are U.S. citizens and attempted to deport them just because, even white people who just don't look white enough, according to ICE. So this terror attack is coming, and at some basic level, there's nothing that you can do to stop it. You have to, we were talking about the hurricane, you have to kind of shelter in place. Yeah. You kind of have to shelter in place, you have to try and try to ride this storm out because it's coming, and I applaud all of the lawsuits trying to stop the Trump administration at a legal level, but we see that he doesn't really care about the legality of it all. He just wants to kick the doors down. Yeah. He just wants to, he, he's, 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 he's doing this to rally up his base, and we keep talking about that, but at some point, the 62% of white people who voted for Donald Trump, the 52% of white women who voted for Trump, at some point, they are the ones who have to stop him because these people are being made to suffer for them. And, and I mean, the thing, and, we, and I will ask you to stay, uh, and thank you for, thank you for be, uh, agreeing to stay, Mustafa, because there's, a, there's an aspect of this that now coincides with this hurricane. Mm -hmm. This hurricane is, is about to hit uh, Louisiana. It now officially is a hurricane. It is now fight as a hurricane. Um, but there's also Houston, which is one of the cities that's targeted. Mm -hmm. There's this, you, you, you spoke about it after the break, and I was like, please stay so you can tell us. I, explain to me what you were telling me after the break at, uh, the last hour. Well, how this policy uh, is actually anchoring people in danger. So there are 10 cities mm -hmm. that the ICE raids are, are supposed to be happening at. One of them was New Orleans, and then they sort of rescinded that for a quick second. The other one is Houston. So if you're a mother with a child and you are being impacted from the floodwaters or from from this hurricane and you are in New Orleans, you probably won't go to a facility because you may be afraid that your child might be taken away, you may be taken away. And for those folks, when we went through Katrina, many people went to Houston to escape. Right. So Houston is on that list also. So if the storm impacts Houston and people are migrating in that direction, or even if it doesn't and people are trying to escape there, then they may also now be in the crosshairs of the Trump administration with these ice raids. So you have to decide, then, Maria Elena, whether you want to live and survive a potentially deadly flooding or, or take a risk of losing your child for trying to save your child from deadly flooding. Absolutely. I, I would agree completely. This is about a terror of rain. I mean, a rain of terror under this administration. And what we've seen actually is that this is also part of the political theatrics. This is a message being said. There are two main messages being sent. Trump is talking to his base to rile up his voters. Look, I'm being harsh. I'm trying to kick these people out, these black and brown people who don't belong here. They will either die um, or they will self-deport. On the other hand, the messages to our communities, to people like me, like we, you are not wanted here. Here. You don't belong here, and we're gonna we're gonna go after you. And this is the the bullying that he's so used to doing, the psychological warfare that he is instilling every single day by sending a message: we're gonna conduct raids, whether they happen or not. Our communities need to be prepared, and this is where um, I'm really in excited about the fact that we've got people across the country coming night to rally against this who are learning about what our rights are because um, previous speakers are right this is not only about undocumented immigrants this is about anyone who looks or uh, who's black or brown who speaks a different language who looks like they might be undocumented right and because in their mind they don't belong here and I, if, exactly. first Maria Teresa and then EJ because what strikes me and I've been thinking about this over the last couple of days is that the difference between what the the Republicans are doing what the Democrats are doing is quite simply that you know Democrats because they're a, more, a polyglot group are essentially fighting for other 
other people, right? Other than you have Latino communities and black and brown communities who have, you know, undocumented people in their family. Yes, they are part of the fight, but it's a larger fight of people who are saying, I'm going to fight for someone else, someone else's health care, someone else not to have their child taken away. Republicans are fighting for themselves, right? And how much harder will you fight for yourself? They're fighting for, they're, they're saying we're protecting ourselves, this country for us. So it, it feels like it's a, it's a different level of fight. Is that, is it, what do you think? The Republicans aren't say, they're not protecting themselves. They're protecting a very sliver. They're, the Democrats are literally saving themselves and protecting Americans. Because these go to the core of our American values of who we are and the fabric of who we are. Joy, this is the challenge of this administration. And this is what, when I said a year ago that this president wanted to do, was starting to do ethnic cleansing in the community, I was so accosted, but this is exactly what he's doing, and it's part of something larger. It's not this, just the children at the border. It's not just it doing immigration raids in the middle of cities in broad daylight. It's the fact that you also p connect the dots and say, why is he asking for a citizenship question? Why is he looking after individuals to ensure that he is securing white, Republican, non-Hispanic districts? Why is he creating a, nat a denaturalization da a task force in this country? When you connect the dots, it's very clear is that he's going after the Latino community. He's going after after immigrant communities, but it's also because he's, he's our potential in our power. Just in the state of Texas, where I am right now, Senator Corman is up for re-election. He said nothing yesterday. He retreated. Vice President Pence, but you know what? In te what in Texas, you have 2.5 unregistered American Latinos that are young and that are present, and they're going to be fighting for their families. Yeah. And that's where we need our allies. Our need our allies at the door, next to us, standing strong, saying, "This is the America of the future. Deal with it. We're present." And, and you know, and, and, and the, the point of it, EJ, is. It is about minority rule. When you put all of these different policies together, the census question, which was revealed by a now deceased Republican um, sort of operative to say, no, we want to make more rights for white and Republican people. Um, you have this attempt to just announcing in advance you're going to go after and deport thousands of people, which you normally wouldn't do if you were just trying to round up criminals. You wouldn't say you're doing it. You want people to know you're doing it. This sort of terrorism of saying, I think to Ellie's point of a proper word, we want you to be afraid. You don't belong here. We're going to Get rid of you whether we have to take your kid whether we have to lock you in a cage put your baby in a cage. we're gonna do whatever we can to make you terrified to make you go away we don't want you here it's about preserving minority rule right well it's minority rule all the way down too. when you just go back to what was the actual outcome of the election Trump losing the popular vote by almost three million right. but I gotta say I was most struck I thought the most moving moment in AOC's testimony was when she talked about the American flag and she spoke about the American flag being present at all of these places where people were being mistreated. And I thought that was a real call across party lines and across the lines of race and ethnicity in saying, do we as Americans want this kind of treatment of other human beings uh, to be the symbol of how our country behaves. I still believe that there is a vast majority in the United States that does not believe that this is who we are. This is not who we should be. And so I was really grateful she pointed those flags yeah. uh, because this ain't us and it shouldn't be us. And, and you know, That's the right. thing is, though, um, the, the, right. the challenge, though, EJ, is that, you know, it, right, I think for the, for the Democratic side, the definition of us is just wider and broader and it is a much more, you know, multiracial, multiethnic party. Um, but not all of that party, not all of that group, which is a majority, votes. Not all of those people can. They are being restricted from voting. They're yep. being held back from voting. They're doing anything they can to make sure those people have no power. It, when the, if the actual majority voted like a majority or could or was allowed to or was willing to, this couldn't happen. That, I mean, people need to start thinking about that. There's a lot of power in that majority if people right. used it. Ellie, uh, we'll be right back. Mustafa, thank you very much for staying. Really appreciate it. Mustafa Santiago, Ali, Maria Elena Incapie, Maria Teresa Kumar, EJ Dion, thank you all. Really appreciate you guys. And up next, Barry is now a hurricane, as I just said. We will have the latest from the Gulf Coast next.